Now we try to explain, uh, be carefully, because my English is very poor. Let's go. Not very good. Oh, but yeah. I learn your, your language by myself. And the teachers were well, all my passengers. <laughs> Already from a 19, especially from a 1973. But I was working before. Not necessarily illegal, but I was already guiding here. Mm. And then uh, I have my pattern. Okay, whatever. Very nice and tight. Thank you. Yeah. What do we have here? We have a Totora reef. So this is the reef. Damage. It's a damage. This damage was we don't use. Oh, I thought maybe. So, this is going to be in the mistake. When they want to harvest the reed, they harvest it from uh, after rainy season normally. It's going to be from uh, March until July. But uh, the reeds for other crafts, they do using the first ones from January, February, March. And they, and they want to use the, the reeds to make small cylinders, correct? The tiny ones, very nice ones, correct? And the name of this uh, Totora reed is Totora, Totora, T O T O R A. And uh, we have uh, another one here, Totora reed. Very young one, nice one, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> 2014, that means it's an aquatic totoro reed. Aquatic, what means aquatic? Water. 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 And it should be water up here. What happens if this is no water and then we have a 12 problem? What happens? Nice. No. So this should be always on water like this, permanent, and this part they use for eating. I call the spirals of Lake Titicaca. It's edible, this part, What's the for the like? people, correct? The rest we give to the guinea pig, oh. to the sheep, to the yama, to the alpaca, and to the cow. Oh, wow. Because what's, it's fresh. What's the taste like? Well, it tastes a little bit, you know... Asparagus? Not the asparagus, but it's quite a, like to the palmito. And it's a sweet. It's a sweet. Okay? And this one is the female totora. Female. It's a flower. Flower on top. Okay. And female has a heart. Corazón. Yeah? <laughs> It's usually cold, though. What about this one? Yeah. You just wait until we get the back male. to Look at it. And the male, where has his flower? In the middle. Top? No. Down. Yeah. And many flowers. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, it's all the males are nice. <laughs> but the problem is no, no heart. <laughs> Couldn't there be two flowers? <laughs> You're not being literal, are you? <laughs> it's children present. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, we do like this. You don't, please don't eat, eh? You could eat it, but you know, don't eat. <laughs> because uh, this has some bacteria, so you could have big diarrhea later. <laughs> okay, just touch it, you know, like, like this. This is the female, okay? Thank you. For me, this is the nice one. Why? Because my, my junk. And, uh, it's also very fine. Like this, no? This is the female, right? 
every time when I when I have my passengers from Japan, I say, don't leave. No? <laughs> Now, uh -huh. where's the male? Right here. There's a male, okay? You know that the female has a heart, right? That heart, when you go, that works. Why is the whole island covered with green? Flying it after something? Yeah. This is the island. I, yeah, I know, but why they cover the ground with reeds? There's, There's no ground. There's no ground. There's no dirt. Oh, okay, I thought there was dirt and then no, no, no. You're in trouble. Oh, that's why you say it's hollow. 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 And then, the only thing that we use for construction, for building the reed boats, female. For make a mattress, female. For make, for weaving, leisure for the house roof, female. For make the tents, female. For conserving the island, like this flooding, female. Male. For Are they good for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, the butterflies, no? You take, and then that was rice. Yeah. But before, before we've been doing like this, okay? I suppose I should be. Then we use them like this, and that good weaving. They could weave in, you know, hot baskets, whatever, one time. Now, it's much cheaper to buy the bags or baskets made from plastic. They would, so we don't use them. The chance they dry like this, they could use them for paper, for collage, for more. That's what they do. Now they are a little Okay. You know about Totora, so Totora reed is very natural source, yes? We use for many things, especially here, and also for the people on the mainland. On the mainland, definitely for many years, they've used them for thrashing the house and roof. Correct? One more thing, please. You know, just pass one small boat, right? With a small wave, I feel it, something like this. Yeah. Because it's a floating island, artificial, man-made design. Mm -hmm. Um, sailing on Lake Titicaca becomes from a long time ago, 5,000 years old, 3,000 years BC. 3,000 years BC, the Aymara has been using reed boats for sailing on the lake. Not just on the Lake Titicaca, also on the ocean. We were not just living here. Aymara people, they've been a big nation. They've been occupying 780,000 square kilometers. Almost, I don't want to exaggerate, but 70% of Peru, you could say it's size. But where was that? North Argentina, North Chile, Bolivia, part of Bolivia, and south of Peru. That was one time the Aymara nation. Aymara, we have more than 20,000 years old, 10,000 when the people they've been making, you know, this. Um, Lithic artifacts, but as a, as a group, civilization becomes from 5,000 years old, 3,000 years BC, culture. Yes, one more time, and we've been using reed boats for sailing here mm. and also the Pacific Ocean. Wow. And then probably some people migrate to the north, be in touch with another nation, and then one day the best sailors of Lake, um, excuse me, the best sailors the Pacific Ocean, they've been the Mochicas, the Mochi people of the north, that they went to other ocean. That's the reason that Thor Helena do the expedition of the Thomas Contiki. Mm. Thor Helena. That's it. And to which persons took Thor Helena to meet the reef boat? To the Mochicas? 
No, to the MRs, from Lake Titicaca. Mm. To, to be built it. So that way. After that, in the 1600s, the conquistadores, they introduced to Lake Titicaca a sailboat. And then on 1861, one of our presidents do a contract to buy two gun ships, iron ship, from England to Lake Titicaca. And now we have motor boats. That's it. In sailing, correct? <laughs> but one more time, please. My mother nation was a huge nation with six groups. Correct? The biggest one, Lupaca. The biggest one, Bacaj. The biggest, biggest one, Hoya. Chiruanos. And uh, also Cayawayas. And the last one was the Uros. These people. But these people, they weren't born here. <laughs> Originally, these people, they come from the salt mining. Where is the salt mining? South from here. Something like, I could say, 200 miles from here. That's the point. What is that? Salt mining. Because this was part of the league, I remember. A big question was that. And up there they have plenty of salt blocks. And the Uriu Indians, they live right there. When the Inca conquered in the 1450, 15th century, he says to the leaders, your group could be part of this one nation, Inca. We have three regions already. It's missing just you. So we're going to be four. So the majority accepted. And the only thing to be part of the Inca was to pay a tax. There was no dollars, no euros, no Peruvian money, no currency. So what happened? We've been paying in our resources, products. Potato products, quinoa products, alpaca products, lemma products, and also we've been, our people, they've been working for the Inca in construction. We have a very good architects, very good engineers. I don't want to exaggerate, but you know, it's part of the history. I want to say, probably they've been also very knowledgeable, meaning persons from other nations from the north. I must have Sometimes I want to say, we teach to the Incas. And probably they teach us too. Both. But they was like that. But the only people who doesn't want to accept this Inca domination was these people. He says, we don't have planets. We don't have quinoa products, we don't have potato, we don't have taco, we don't have yam. And we could pay you salt blocks. The Inca says, no, we have salt. Or, we need to leave this place. I think this adaptation, these people, they escape. And not to Lake Titicaca, to the Lake Popo. And they've been living in... They're living on street boats. What do they do? Houseboat. What is a houseboat? A raft. And a tent top. This is a houseboat. Yeah. And extra reef boat for fishing, hunting, whatever. And they be living on the shore, on the shore of the lake. It's not a lake, what I'm saying. We found notes, write it. Not by the Incas, of course. <laughs> Over the Amaris. By the conquistadores, by the Spanish. First big note about these people, this, thing, this way that they saw people living like this, becomes from 1569, 16th century. Much big information to so how many members, what have they been doing, and everything. 1780, 18th century. And the last one, 1850, 19th century. And those three informations was reconfirmed by four anthropologists from Czechoslovakia in the 1920s, last century. They've been in Puno, they want to have contact, not with the Uro Indians, with the oldest descendants from the Aymaras here. And somebody says, oh yes, there are some people living on the lake. They found a boat, they come here, and they saw people living like this. 1922. Uh, 1922. And he, they, they write it about this people. 1936, we have a big drought time, no rain, for seven years. 
36 to 43. And the lake throughout 24 feet. Wow. On the way from Puno to here, remember, I told you, on the canal, 12 feet, 11 feet. On the ridge, 3 feet, 2 feet, 1 feet. If I say that the lake was through two, um, 24 feet, what means that? From here to Puno was trout, no rain. So what happened? The reeds, you know, the reeds, there's no water anymore. So the roots took soil and this dies, but rise a small reed like this when it's dry. What units? So these roots come here, these roots come here to hamper. Big pastures. When the lake passed after the drought time, what happened? All these blocks of root of reeds flooded. And the Udo Indians during that drought time, they migrated to the mainland. They believe living over there. And then their children, they mix with the people from the mainland and raise these people, Udo Aymara people. When they back to live here on houseboats, one day one fisherman found one big platform floating. So he says, why I don't unit that block with this block? I cover with reeds and I make better life in Reed Island. Mm -hmm. And then they improve this island since 1950 up. That means 64 years ago, people are living like this. Not for tourists, of course. 1950s, there was no tourists. There was no, I mean, it was great one probably, or the two commons in the United States, but there was no great one here. There was no any other two commons here. There were tourists coming by their own, by train from Cusco to Puno. And then they were going to Bolivia by steamer. Very few they've been in Puno. And they went, they went renting small boats to, to, you know, to do a sightseeing on the lake, but not to see the reed islands. There was no reed islands. The reed islands they've been, but inside of the reeds. Not for, for opening like this. They've been living very close uh, living. What happened then? 1957, two North Americans from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They have information people living here, abandoned without education, without religion, without anything. So these two guys, they, they have their own boat. They found these people living inside. It was very hard to touch them, because these people living also very, very say. <laughs> Okay. Let me pretend this is one cat taking a picture. <laughs> just! I'll just fly. Oh, I think he's going are you gonna jump? Are you gonna go for a ride? I do! I want to go for a ride. Watch the kids fish me off. <laughs> they were just. Oh, this is mine. Maybe when they stop. <laughs> Okay, I would like to introduce to the teacher of this kindergarten, and her name is Amalia. Her name is Amalia. Uh, two years ago, he won in one competition in Peru at innovation because uh, she could not find a job as a teacher, so she decides to open her own kindergarten on, on Lake Kirigaka. By that project, she went to a competition with many teachers in Peru, and she wins. And then the president of Peru decides to open an official kindergarten, and then they give the kindergarten as a present to her. But that belongs to the community. So this is a new one. And now she's walking here. So Amalia has got an issue. And Amalia has 34, 34 
uh, two is from three to five, and uh, they are coming from the, from the different islands. And uh, the teacher with the boat, she kicks up from island to island to island to here, except the primary school. Primary school, every father takes their children to the school. And then they're going to be here until one. After that, they're going to take them up. These are from five to four, five years. Thank you very much. Yes? You want to go in? And, uh, no, no, I went in for a little bit. Okay, me too. Ask him if I can swing. No, I can swing. Oh, no, 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 Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 